Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, June 29th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about a poll from the state of Arizona that directly relates to Mark Kelly and Kirsten Sinema in their Senate positions amongst other elected officials, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Doug Ducey. But the main takeaway I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video is that Kirsten Sinema's approval rating is increasing. But as a result, there isn't always much you can do in politics where you are starting to become approved of where there isn't some detrimental side effect. Uh, you know, there is always room to fall for these politicians. And it seemed that Kirsten Cinema did reach that point just a few months ago when she seemed to be uh, a major opponent to many pieces of Joe Biden's administration's uh, legislation that they were pushing across the United States Congress and the United States Senate. And you can actually see a lot of Democrats start to disapprove of Kirsten Cinema in this poll, but there are some few things that you might strike as surprising or potentially uh, good things for Kirsten Cinema. But I want you to understand why I view them as a catch. So we're going to be going through this. This poll covers a number of elected officials. It isn't really uh, super informative in terms of what the topic of this video is about. There is a bunch of wonderful information in here pertaining to Governor Doug Ducey, pertaining to President Joe Biden, to President Donald Trump. So some things to look at there potentially in a future video talking about the audits, whatever it might be. But the main thing we're going to be talking about today is the uh, Mark Kelly and Kirsten Cinema approval rating. So I want to start out by showing you Mark Kelly's approval rating, someone who has been uh, sometimes on par with Kirsten Cinema, who does better or sometimes does worse. In this poll, you will see Mark Kelly do worse than Kirsten Cinema. But then again, there is a catch. 26% of Arizonans believe, uh, sorry, not believe, view Mark Kelly very favorably. Just 22% view him somewhat favorably. 18% uh, view him unfavorable in some fashion, and then 23% view him very unfavorably. 5% don't recognize him, and 6% just don't have an answer. So you can see here that there's an overall advantage of seven points amongst the favorable versus unfavorable, not necessarily too surprising for someone who is newly elected and seated back in November of 2020. When you look at the breakdown, it's pretty routine. 82% of Democrats favor him, 5% don't, 75% of Republicans don't favor him, and 17% of Republicans do, 46% of independents favor him, 41% do not. Now, if you're looking at the uh, you know, approval rating and to how he's handling his job as United States Senator, it's 51 to 35, which means that people say, okay, he's doing a good job, but I might not necessarily view him in a favorable way. I may not like him as a person. I may not think that he's credible, but right now he's not doing too poorly of a job. For Kristen Cinema, her favorability rating is quite high, 50% to 37%. And I know this may seem, oh, Kristen Cinema is liked a lot more understand who likes her versus who doesn't. When you look at the breakdown, the cross tabs here, you'll see that 51% of Republicans view Kirsten Cinema in a favorable fashion. The majority of Republicans view Kirsten Cinema favorably. Barely the same amount of Democrats view her favorably as well. 52% of Democrats. I mean, you should be seeing a Democrat uh, cross tab here at 80, 90, the same way it is for Mark Kelly in terms of the favorability rating poll, 82% down to just 52%. It seems that a significant portion of the Democratic base says they view Kirsten Cinema unfavorably. Now, the independent numbers are actually worse for Cinema than they are amongst uh, Mark Kelly, and it is quite interesting to see that independents view Cinema less than Republicans. But the fact Democrats and Republicans are about even is also something that is quite fascinating. I mean, Kirsten Cinema has captivated the Republican base largely because she is now recognized as one of the sole reasons why the filibuster can't go away. Now recognized as one of the main reasons why Joe Biden and his administration can't pass major pieces of legislation. What's happening in Arizona is that these Republicans are viewing Kirsten Cinema in a way as an obstructionist for the Democratic Party. And that's exactly what many Democrats, I think, view her as well. That's why she's at 34%. I mean, she doesn't reach that point for no reason. Kirsten Sinema's approval rating after being elected was much higher amongst Democrats and much lower amongst Republicans. But here's the catch. Here's the thing about Republican support. Before we actually talk about that, let's show the favorability rating in terms of handling the job as United States Senator. One thing you might notice, though, is that more people approve of Mark Kelly handling their job as United States Senator versus Kirsten Sinema. And if you look at the breakdown, you know the Democratic uh, portion starts to decrease. Why? Because looking at it, you know, people may say, okay, I like Kirsten Cinema. I like her as a person. I view her in a favorable light, but she's not doing much for me right now as a Democrat. She's not doing much for me right now as an independent. 
You might notice that the numbers are considerably higher for Mark Kelly amongst independents in terms of the spread amongst Democrats, but it seems that the best performing portion for Kirsten Sinema, the best performing demographic group amongst Arizona citizens is Republicans in terms of how she is handling her job as United States Senator. But understand why this is a catch. Republican support, Republican approval doesn't translate to Republican votes. While Kirsten Sinema may be viewed as a bipartisan senator now, ask how well that worked for Joe Donnelly in 2018. While it was a year where the Republican Party was able to do much better in the United States Senate, and it seemed that, you know, only a six-point margin, and I get that. It was only a six-point margin. But I do want to say that Donnelly, Heitkamp, McCaskill could have been in better positions if you were just looking at the plain approval rating. In fact, I will show it to you. You know, Joe Donnelly was approved of by net 1%. McCaskill had decreased over the month, so McCaskill made a little bit of sense. Joe Donnelly was still approved of at the time that he lost re-election. Plus one in the quarter three of 2018 leading into October, uh, calculated from July through September. I mean, these polls were taken to show you and give you a general idea of how the midterm elections might unfold. And for some of these races, you know, you might find it to be quite interesting. I mean, Joe Manchin and Joe Donnelly had nearly the same approval rating at Joe Manchin won and Joe Donnelly lost by six points. Heitkamp was up four points on the overall spread. She lost by 10 points. Joe Manchin won. She had double the net approval rating. I mean, the approval rating doesn't always translate to Republican votes. And while it may increase your margin somewhat, in a state like Arizona, which is going to be heavily polarizing, going to be heavily targeted by the GOP the same way North Dakota was, and Indiana was, and Florida was, and Missouri was, typically speaking, you are going to start to see uh, a lot of Republicans focus on the race, which means that the Republicans are going to start to walk back. You know, an approval rating doesn't always translate to votes. Another perfect example is Ted Cruz in the state of Texas. He's up with a net approval rating of 14 points. He won his election by less than three. John Tester, same situation, up 15 points, won his election by around three points. Approval rating does not always translate to votes. It gives you an idea, but sometimes it can be wrong. In the case of Heitkamp, it was wrong. So it is just interesting. Okay, so looking at this, these numbers here, as the Republican Party starts to focus on Arizona in 2024, and I know it seems like a far time away, but this will be an ample opportunity for the GOP. I mean, looking at this map, there are so many opportunities for the Republican Party. They are going to ensure that they don't mess up the way the Democrats did in 2020. While Democrats did reclaim the majority, there were about 10 competitive races and Democrats only won three of them. And in fact, there are probably more than 10 competitive races. But if you're looking at this map, what can you think about? Montana, that's certainly a target. Uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, Arizona, Nevada, Minnesota. You have a number of states that can certainly be deemed competitive, that can certainly be targeted by the GOP, and I don't think Arizona is going to be an ignored one because of this approval rating. The only reason why Cinema has this approval rating is because of her voting record. It's because of the way she's acting as a senator from Arizona. But she also puts herself at a threat to be primaried. If the plurality of Democrats approve of her, but 38% do not in terms of how she's handling her job, and she's only up by roughly the same amount as, as much as she's up amongst Republicans, uh, you know, looking at these Democrat numbers for Kirsten Cinema, I would be worried if I was her. If I was in a position where this could continue for the next three years, potentially she could lose a primary. Now, right now, I don't think she would lose a primary. I do not think Kirsten Cinema would be primaried at this moment. There's just too much uh, benefit of being an incumbent, especially in Congress. So for Kirsten Sinema's sake, there certainly will probably be a strong primary opposition, but I think that she will likely hold on simply because the plurality of Democrats do still support her. But for, this Republicans, for these Republicans, I can't imagine many of them would be inclined to vote for her in 2024. While they may approve of her, they're likely to vote against her. I mean, look at 2018. I mentioned North Dakota because she was up four points, yet lost by 10. That's a 14-point deficit. Montana, John Tester won by three points. He was up by 15 statewide in terms of overall approval. Only won by three. That's a reduction of 12. Ted Cruz was up 14 points. Only won by three. 
that's a reduction of 11 points. I mean, looking at the approval rating for some of these people, I mean, uh, you know, Joe Donnelly was up one point, lost to Mike Braun. Claire McCaskill was down. This one sort of makes sense, but she actually only lost by six points. I mean, looking at some of these approval rating numbers, it's just quite interesting to see how some of these senators held on despite being disapproved of or lost despite being approved of or their margins were significantly narrowed. And I don't think Arizona is a state like Missouri, a state like Indiana, a state like West Virginia, where you could see a conservative Democrat appease many of these constituents and win elections that way. The thing about Arizona is that it's not a conservative Democratic state. It's not some state where Kirsten Sinema needs to have such uh, a bipartisan voting record. You know, you have Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, arguably just as close of a state as Arizona, and he votes as if he was from Mississippi. Okay. And, you know, you have other senators in positions that they are in very vulnerable states, Michigan, Pennsylvania, right? Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, States equally as competitive, if not more, than Arizona. Maybe not by 2020 standards, by historical standards, for sure. That vote in a much more partisan fashion than Kirsten Cinema. And when I'm looking at the exit polls, Democrats tend to do better uh, comparatively to the national level amongst Arizona Republicans. When you look at party ID, typically speaking, you're getting double digits amongst the Republican vote in the state of Arizona. Kirsten Cinema got 12%. Joe Biden, if we can find it here, got uh, 9%. So, did a little bit worse, but 9% versus 3% of Democrats voting for Trump, that's pretty good. And, you know, I don't think, though, that this 12% is all of a sudden going to translate to 54% or 51%. Understand the situation that the Republican Party is in today. The peak seems to be what cinema reached in 2018. 2018, might I remind you, was a Democrat plus eight national year. So the environment was very friendly for the Democratic Party. I can't say 2024 will be the exact same. It could be, but this is a presidential election year. Expect states to revert back to their traditional swing state status. Midterm elections typically can be there as referendums against the incumbent president. Presidential elections sometimes can be, but rarely do presidents ever lose re-election. But this is the case uh, in a situation in which tens of millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars will be spent on parties in certain states. And Arizona, I can tell you right now, will be one of those reaching that 100 million plus status for 2024, where everything will become politicized, every question, every nook and cranny on the ballot, because it's a presidential election year. So Kirsten Cinema will see, potentially, um, she could win re-election, but she will not do it on the backs of Republican voters. Arizona has enough Democrats and enough independents to elect Democrats continuously as they did with Cinema, Kelly, Biden. They have the ability to do so but she needs to be able to resonate with them and actually win them over. Because right now, doing better amongst Republicans and independents doesn't mean much. As someone who is looking at this and has seen this happen for prior candidates, you can be approved of by the opposition party and they can still vote against you 90 to 10 because that's how American politics works. Donald Trump didn't lose the popular vote by 12 points despite being down 12 points in terms of the approval rating on election day. You don't always win the amount that you are approved of by or lose the amount that you are disapproved of by. That's not always how American politics works. So in this instance for Kirsten Cinema, she may be approved of by Republicans, but I can guarantee you by the time we reach 2024, that will not translate to nearly the same amount of support. She only won 12% of Republican support in a Democratic plus eight national environment year. It was the perfect year for Arizona to flip to the Democrats. She won here by 2.4%. Yes, she probably won because she got 12% of Republican support. The state is actually getting bluer. It's increasing in terms of its minority population. So you can expect the state to be in a position where, you know, cinema won't need these Democrats, sorry, these Republicans to be backing them in order for her to win. But the thing is, she probably won't be getting many of them anyway. 2024 will not be a similar year to 2018. The Senate elections are likely to be much more detrimental to Democrats. And looking at the map, they don't exactly have too many opportunities for pickups either. The only two I can imagine are Texas and Florida, two states of which are still held by the Republican Party uh, on almost every level. In fact, every level in Florida. There hasn't been a major statewide victory in Florida uh, for the Democrats since 2012. In Texas, it's been a lot longer than that. And while 2024 might be that year where they defeat Ted Cruz, at the expense of what? 
Joe Manchin losing in West Virginia, Sherrod Brown losing in Ohio, Tammy Baldwin losing in Wisconsin, Debbie Stabenow losing in Michigan, Bob Casey losing in Pennsylvania. You have John Tester in Montana, Kirsten Cinema in Arizona. Uh, you know, you have plenty of people that could potentially lose in 2024. Maybe go so far as consider maybe Jackie Rosen in Nevada or other senators across the United States. Maybe Virginia or New Mexico could be back up for grabs. Who knows? But on the Republican side, the only two races you can really see as competitive right now are Florida and Texas. Outside of that, you probably won't see it. So for Kirsten Sinema's sake, she is going to be in a year where the Democratic environment probably won't be good in the United States Senate, and she will be a heavy target. Not only will it be a state targeted on uh, the Senate level, but also, and most importantly, on the presidential level. And as soon as you start to see Nikki Haley down there campaigning for her party, or Donald Trump down there campaigning for his party, or Donald Trump Jr., or Mike Pence, or Ron DeSantis, whatever it might be, Arizona will be a prime target for the GOP. And while those Republicans could still very well approve of her at that point, they certainly won't vote for her. So Mark Kelly's approval rating is rooted very much in Democratic support versus Kirsten Sinema, who isn't. But only one base has consistently voted with the Democratic Party, and obviously that's the Democrats, which puts her in a difficult position. This means potentially she could be primaried, or it could mean she doesn't get that energy and support she needs from the Democratic side to a point where they may actually leave that ballot blank and consequently lose her, her Senate seat, for a six-year term. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.